all the pups. You can see the line where the horses could graze to, and they're manuring right along the fence line. So they've been grazing this side, and I've just given this strip here to them. But I wanted to say, to let you know, this is cow parsley, uh, sorry, sheep parsley. Cow parsley is the big one, and this is sheep parsley, which blooms now in July and August, whereas the cow parsley blooms in the spring. The swallows are zipping around the place at the moment, and there's lots of butterflies. You can see in the grass here, there's red clover, there's white clover here, um, all different kinds of grasses. Here's some hawksweed. This is in the dandelion family. So lots of different plants for the horses to eat. But I'm really pleased that the sheep parsley is uh, beginning to really show its face. It's taken a few years of um, for it to really start blooming. It's a small, low-lying, I think I think these are called umbelfurs or something, when there are flowers like this. I'm not good on my floral technology. But anyway, so we got a patch of sheep's parsley there. And you can see different grasses. That's one grass here. This is another here. This is one of the most recognizable grasses. It's called coxfoot, because it looks like a coxfoot in the shape of it. So then you have this grass here, this airy fairy grass. Do you see that? And this grass here, and this grass here. So a diversity of grasses in here. Isn't that right? Isn't that right? So the, I'll walk back now to where I give the horses a little bit of grain so that I don't have to fight with them wanting to get to the fresh grass. And what's so lovely is Let's see if I can capture it. It's very difficult. Is that there's butterflies. Where'd it go? Well, there was butterflies. There it is. I don't know if you can see it. It was flying away. Anyway, there is uh, all these kind of um, uh, brown meadows and things like that. Butterflies in this long grass and also the crickets or grasshoppers. Look at the butterflies, there they are. Two of them playing, frolicking, or they were. There's another butterfly over here. Let's see if I can get close enough. Where did it land? Oh, I see it. I don't know if you can see it on the film. There, these are the, boop, 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 boop. there it goes. Anyway, that might not come across on film, I don't know. Look at all the grasses. Isn't that beautiful? You can see the progression of where the horses grazed at different stages. The most recent, they graze right to the nub. And then you come up here, and they've access to this, but they're not grazing it. It's the regrowth. So it's slightly bitter, and they don't want it. It'll taste sweet down the road. But this is the natural progression, so that animals, herbivores, always want to move forward. And this is why this kind of grazing helps uh, the environment because it is how the environment developed and grew, the insect life and the animals. So these grasses, see right here, there's dandelion, yarrow, clover, uh, several different kinds of dandelions, um, buttercup. But the horses are not regrazing this because they've got access to the fresher stuff, which tastes sweeter. So if I walk along here, back towards the horses, you'll see, like, for example, here's a purple, uh, red clover that the horses aren't touching. And it, all in their manure, they don't touch. There's no need for them to graze backwards over what they've grazed. Look, this red clover will develop, get pollinated, and will seed, unlike a lot of its sister plants. And there's a bit of daisy, more yarrow, so this is how, and look at all this grass. This is fine. This is a, the grow back from when, look at there's white clover here. See, there's white clover. So when you create 
a natural scenario for herbivores, they take advantage of it. So you can see it's all green up here. It gets greener and greener as you go backwards in time from where they originally grazed. There's loads of white clover and look at this. Loads of red clover to seed, pollinate and seed. And that's how this works. It's using the natural tendency. Look at how rich and deep this grass is here. I mean, this is rich, deep. This is where the horses urinated and manured. They don't want to touch it, so they don't have to. So the regrowth is really, really good. As the further back in time I go to how the horses grazed. See all this regrowth. They were eating the docks, so the docks are growing back. Great plants for wormings and tannins. So here's nettles. I don't think, well, I can't tell yet. It's too early to see if any butterflies have laid eggs on them and if they're being eaten by caterpillars or not. But it's in a perfect sunny location. But look at all this grass growth. The horses are out in this field. Look at all the white clover coming through. Now, this field, this is going well backwards in time. This was the first area they were in. Look at how deep that is. Oh, there they go. Java, Java, leave it. So they're gonna go and start grazing the new location that I've just given them. But look at how thick and rich this is. And they've complete access to it, but they're not grazing it because it's more bitter and the, because it's a regrowth. They don't want to eat the regrowth. So here, we'll look at the horses grazing down here. Look at the mushrooms too. Fungi in the soil, really, really important. So they're down here. You can see how chewed over this is now. This is the more recent stuff. So this would be uh, one, two, three moves. Okay, this pathway is sort of new because I moved that fence further in. And you can see where they were resting in the shade here. And there's the cat time. But look, they're immediately in the new growth and that's where they want to be. So I am creating a man-made artificial natural habitat for the horses to graze and the insect life, etc., and the plant life. See, they're very happy there. And look at that green up there. They're not touching that. Ow! You can just, you know what's just happened. <laughs> You have just landed on my shoulder. <laughs> You're such a cat. He is such a cat. Thank goodness I have this padded vest on because <laughs> otherwise it would be very painful. Look at those claws. You are such a meanie, the way you use your claws to clamber up me. <laughs> We're under the lime tree, which still smells delicious. And there's, oh, get down. You're clawing me too much. There's still a bit of humming going on. Not as much as earlier, because the bloom is nearly over. You can see they're all getting dark because they've been fertilized with the pollen. But there's a bit of buzzing, not very much. Don't know if you can hear it or not. Anyway. There we go. And very happy horses. This area around the chickens is looking really fantastic. The evening primrose, the oxide daisies, this is the yarrow, 
and you come over this way and there's valerian and this beautiful tree more valerian the roses here's the artichoke and fennel more evening primrose and daisies and yarrow and then over here is um honeysuckle and passion flower passion flower is about to bloom and the chickens are all having a lovely time. Chook, chook, chooking. Look at all the daisies. Fantastic amount of daisies. I love that this artichoke, it took a lot of TLC for a couple of years to make sure that this um, survived. I had three here, but only one made it. But it's worth it and it's now established, which is great. But I love how this wildness is taking over here, this floral wildness. So, oh, and look, a little bit of mallow. So a bit of the wild garden. First of the small tortoiseshell that I've been able to catch on film. There's loads of them around. It's just they're hard to catch on film, especially when they've just emerged. This is the other dry garden. And until I arrived, as I was walking into the yard here, there were loads of butterflies on it. And they've all gone away. Oh, look, there's one on some valerian. But they're very nervous when they first emerge. So there is a tortoise shell on some valerian. You want to have nettles for them so that they can lay their eggs on the nettles and their caterpillars eat the nettles. So there were lots of butterflies and I walk in the yard and they all fly away. What they do is they see me coming, think I'm a bird and they literally flutter over and go over the other side of the wall into the garden. I'll go and see if there's more in the garden because they've all left here. There was, it was flitting about with butterflies. I honestly, not just that one. There's other pollinators at work like this bee. Scabias is such a wonderful pollinator. So many of them love it. There's another bee. Oops. <laughs> 